Is it a buyer's market or a seller's market? Is it a good time to buy a home or should I sell my current home? If you look hard enough, you're gonna find someone that will recommend one or the other just so they can sell you something. I'm gonna tell you a dirty little secret. Depending on how you analyze these numbers, you can sway somebody one way or the other. But I'm not gonna do that to you. Instead, I'm gonna break down what happened in the real estate market here in San Diego last month in May. And I'm gonna give you actual data and then you can decide what you wanna do. Sound fair? All right, let's get after it. If you haven't seen one of my market updates before, there are four main indicators that I want you to focus on, which are median sales price, percentage of original list price received, days on market, and months supply of inventory. These four indicators will give you a good idea of what's currently going on in the market and if it makes sense for you. First, median sales price was down 2.6% to 955,000 for detached homes and 4.5% to 640,000 for condos and townhomes. This percentage is year over year, which means that compared to this time last year, home prices were down. But let's put this in the context. Last year was a post-COVID market and the home prices were ridiculously overpriced. If you take a closer look at the numbers, you'll see that this year single family homes have been on a steady increase since January, when the median home price was 849,000 and now it's 955,000. With condos and townhomes consistently going up since December 2022, when the median home price was 585,000 and now we're at 640,000. Remember, context is everything with indicators. Next, percentage of original list price received went up again in the month of May to 101.1% for single family homes and 101.3% for condos and townhomes. This indicator is pretty straightforward. What it's saying is that in the month of May, whatever homes were being listed for, they received over the list price. What does this mean for you? It means that the probability of a seller paying for closing costs or paying for the 2-1 or 3-2-1 mortgage rate buy down is more than likely not going to happen. So adjust accordingly. Days on market for single family homes in May held at 29 days, whereas condos and townhomes decreased from 31 days back in April down to 23 days in May. So this indicator is showing that homes will move faster, but still aren't moving at the ridiculous speed they were a year ago. So if you're a seller, realize that your home is going to be on the market for 23 to 29 days on average. So don't stress out if you don't have 100 offers after the first open house weekend. I know this is just personal experience. My last three buyers, all worth in the $750,000 to $1.3 million range, all were in multiple offer situations. Once again, that was just my personal experience. Take it for what you will. Month supply of inventory went up to 2.9 months of inventory for all homes, which is just up slightly from 2.5 months of inventory back in April. But what you should gather from this indicator is that we are still heavily in a seller's market. Remember, anything over six months of supply equals a buyer's market, where there are more homes for sale than there are buyers. And anything under six months of inventory is a seller's market, where there are more buyers than there are homes for sale. So that's a good segue into my final thought. Although on paper and by the numbers, it is a seller's market. But if you ask most homeowners, they're just not feeling it. They're not in a hurry to sell, even though they have so much equity in their home after the appreciation for the past few years. Why? Because they're imprisoned by their 3% mortgage rate. They don't want to sell their home and then have to become a buyer in this market with the seven and a quarter mortgage rates. So basically homeowners are starting to feel the pressure of the interest rate hikes. Sure, buyers felt it at first as it kept going up month by month, but now it's hitting sellers because as soon as you sell your home, you then become a buyer. But there still are a few people that this market does work for and those are absentee owners, which are landlords and people that own vacation homes and homeowners that are trying to move out of San Diego. You might have seen or heard on the media being overblown, like saying something along the lines of people are fleeing from California. Well, not really. They just have so much equity in their home that they can sell their home here and use their 300,000 in equity and go move to some third world state like Texas where they could buy a house outright. All right, sorry, Texas, but you're just the first one that came to mind. So I know this is really confusing time for a lot of people. If you have any questions, just click the link below and schedule a 30 minute call. There's no sales tactics or anything like that. And I'll answer any questions that you have on your current situation, whether it's giving you an idea of how much your specific home could sell for or helping you figure out if it's the right time for you to buy a home. So that's all I have for you guys. Thanks for watching. If you want to see some cool video tours of homes and neighborhoods all across San Diego, whether you're trying to move to a different neighborhood or want to move to San Diego, here's the playlist right here. You can check them out. I uh, put up new ones every week. If you want me to do a specific home or neighborhood, just leave me a comment below and then I'll knock it out for you. Please smash the like button if this video helped you or if you found any sort of value. If you want to see more videos just like this, please press the subscribe button. And once again, thank you for watching.